Good afternoon, everybody. This is Brian Caprice, and welcome to today's presentation of Parabolic Retracements. Um, very, very excited today to be with you guys. This is one of those things that is uh, one of my favorite, absolute favorite strategies to trade out there, and something that I find is extremely powerful, and I hope that you guys are able to grab something today um, and be able to put it into practice. Um, that's my goal. So, with that being said, let's just dive right into things. I know that uh, some people in the middle of the day, uh, you may be at lunch or about to head into lunch or, again, maybe sneaking out a little early. But uh, I want to make sure that we get as most out of our time today as we possibly can. So first things first, I'm going to start off with a Nadex risk disclaimer. Now, trading on Nadex involves financial risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. The information presented here is for information and education purposes only and should not be considered an offer or solicitation to buy or sell any financial instrument on Nadex or elsewhere. Any trading decisions that you make are solely your responsibility and past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Nadex contracts are based on underlying asset classes, including Forex, stock index, future, stock index futures, and commodity futures. Now, trading can be volatile and investors risk losing their investment on any given transaction. However, the design of Nadex contracts ensures that investors cannot lose more than the cost to enter the transaction. Nadex is subject to U.S. regulatory oversight by the CFTC. Okay. Now that's for Nadex. Um, as far as keep trading simple and what I do, this is our disclaimer, pretty standard. Again, no representations being made that the use of this strategy or any other system or trading methodology will generate profits. And most importantly, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Only risk capital should be used when you're trading. Don't lose money that you can't afford to lose. Okay, uh, That's the most important piece that I want to give you from this entire slide. Um, but besides that, the two of them kind of go hand in hand. Um, I already see a question button popping up. Good afternoon to you as well. All right, guys, so let's dive into it. So who am I? If you guys aren't familiar with who I am, um, let me give you guys a quick rundown because it's important to understand where I'm coming from when I'm talking about this strategy and how you could potentially trade it in your trading with Nadex. Now, I'm the president and CEO of Keep Trading Simple, and one of our missions is really to help simplify trading, to remove a lot of the distractions the professionals tell that you need to have. So I started in the tech bubble. Perfect time to get in, right, when the whole world just coming crashing down. But that's actually when I started, and I've traded multiple from asset classes. And what I realized is it really doesn't matter what asset class you're trading. They're absolutely all the same, okay? Uh, yes, I know that, you know, Apple is not, you know, the euro dollar currency pair. But the way that we are looking at charts and things like that, it is exactly the same. A chart is a chart is a chart, okay? I cannot say that enough. Um, if you cover the upper left-hand corner or wherever it shows you our symbol, charts are exactly the same, okay? They are formed. They're open, you know, closes, highs, lows. It didn't matter. And that's what I uncovered that there's really, you know, again, if you're able to trade a market, right, you can trade anything. Um, so I've created a couple different systems, but I'm a, I am primarily a price action trader. And my belief is that anyone, again, when you focus on price action and really what's happening behind the scenes, I do believe that anyone really can trade the system. Those are my personal beliefs. And I've created a number of different courses already that are Nadex based. Um, this is another one that you will see is not up there. It's actually being launched next week. Um, and this is kind of giving a kind of a, a preface to the strategy, you know, behind the strategy. All right. Now I do stay very busy. Okay. This is one of those things that, um, I use strategies like this. So I don't have to spend hours and hours and hours in front of a computer. I do know traders that will spend 12 to 14 hours a day sitting in front of a computer waiting for their setups. And that's not me. Okay? And, and if that's you, again, this strategy may not be for you, but for me, I'm very much about technology. I am very much about maximizing my time in front of the computer. You guys can see I'm very proud of my little daughter down there. She is uh, actually 15 months old and walking now, so she's everywhere, and I take care of her during the day. Uh, but I also coach you know, lacrosse to my kids. Uh, my, two, my two sons are twins. So I stay very, very busy. So for me, this is a perfect strategy to trade. Again, most parabolic retracements, I'll go over the definition in a second, happen around news. Well, guess what? Surprise. We know exactly when news is going to happen. So I can really focus and use time management to make sure that I am in front of a computer to be able to set up these different strategies. Okay. Now, if that's something that you like, then yes, this may be for you. All right. So again, that's kind of where I come from. Again, we're going to talk about, about price action and candles and candlesticks. And if you're unfamiliar with those, again, we can touch base later on and you know, I can give you a hand with that. So with that being said, let's go through the agenda for today. All right. First things first, I'm going to define what is a parabolic move. Okay. You may not be familiar with that terminology. And again, it's just the terminology that I've used for it. It's how I was originally kind of, um, it was described to me. Uh, so I will explain what it is. Two, I will talk about why we are trading the retracement, not the parabolic move. Okay, a lot of people are always in there trying to play guessing games. And again, I'll talk about that. Next, when can it be traded? 
Okay, maybe you do have a full time job. Maybe you are kind of threading the needle with when you can trade. Now uh, we'll discuss that a little bit. Then we'll talk about what asset classes you can use to trade it. Now again, Nadex is great for this, and we'll cover that in that section. Um, but I'll go through what are the best kind of scenarios of where you can trade this and, and when. And then also, why would you choose an out of the money contract? You know, you, know, you guys saw in the beginning the name is you know when to use um, it's parabolic retracements. It's when out of the money makes sense, right? A little play on words there. But again. Out of the money, you know, do you know what that means and why would you use it and what are the pros and cons? We're going to go through that and make sure that you guys are um, understanding um, why and, and when you would use that. All right. So with that being said, let's just jump straight into this. OK, um, parabolic move, you know, uh, for coming up with a quote for that one is what just happened. And there's no quote on the other side because you can't even finish the sentence, you know. So a parabolic move by definition is this okay it's an explosive one directional move in an asset that is exponentially greater than the average move during that time frame again mate that's a lot of it's it's a tongue tire right you know if you say that a few times really really fast you're either going to sound really really smart or it's not going to come out of your mouth um it often look like panic buying or selling and is most times associated with a major market event like earnings or news releases um think interest rate change right what happens the market goes absolutely crazy right well, those are emotional responses to news, okay? Um, again, as I mentioned before, a lot of this is going to occur and happen around news releases, okay? Um, again, one of the things about news releases that make this interesting is when we talk about a news release, there is an overall market consensus, and that's what's called the forecast, okay? Well, the market prices itself accordingly based off what the forecast is, all right? Well, what happens when the forecast is wrong? And can the forecast be wrong? And I'll ask that in a different way. Are the weathermen ever incorrect in their forecast? If you are shaking your head up and down yes right now, then you also understand how news trading goes. Because most of the time, and I'd say it's, I have a spreadsheet for it, but it's about, it's about above 70% of the time, the forecast is wrong. Okay, In oil, it's actually wrong even more than that. But as far as overall major economic rules places, they are typically wrong over 70% of the time. Okay. Now, you may say, what does this look like, Brian? I mean, how do I know what is a parabolic move, right? How does it look? Okay, well, very simply, there. That's what it looks like, okay? You guys are able to see here. Look on the left-hand side right now. And again, I don't know if you guys can see the actual cursor or not. But if you look over on the left-hand side, you guys can see there's a very, very large green candle with a huge, huge wick on it. And then what happens? It retraced. And then what do we see again? We see another large, large spike again. These are considered... Um, parabolic moves, parabolic candles, or extended range candles, huge, huge body candles. And remember, the body, for those of you that are new to trading, is formed by the open and close. And what they do is they take the opening price, the closing price, and then it becomes a color. If it's up, obviously it's green. If the close is lower, obviously it's red. Chart on the right, you guys can see the same exact thing. What happened? We saw a huge news-based spike from 71 all the way up over 72.50. And what happened? Price spent its time grinding back to where the price was before the move actually occurred. Okay, now that's kind of the um, that's kind of the, the simple definition. Now you may be saying, okay, well, how do you define what? I don't know. I mean, yes, it's large on the chart, but what would you consider an exponential move? How do I know that it's just not a bigger candle during that time, or you know, what really makes this special? You know, because again, this can happen outside of news, but for the most part, it does happen around news. Well, for me myself, and again, this is a little bit of a perk. Um, this is you know, something that is obviously discussed in greater detail than what I can do today. But I typically define this by anything that's over one and a half times that chart periods ATR or average true range. Okay. ATR is a tool that I use a lot. I use it for targets. I use it for forecasting, for uh, stop losses. But what, what, you know, what we typically do here is we say if the ATR, and again, this could be an hourly chart, it could be a 30 minute chart. If you take the ATR and it's over one and a half times that, you have to automatically be thinking, hey, this is probably going to retest or, you know, or retrace back again. Um, you know, should I be looking at this? And that's kind of what I use for the setup. Now, most times, you know, large news releases, you'll get two times, you know, sometimes two and a half times. But anything over one and a half times the ATR is typically a trigger for me. OK, now. With that being said, we just happen to have something that happened this morning, which would be a parabolic retracement. So I was pretty excited when I had when this kind of popped out and I said, okay, let me show that right away. And again, I'll come back to this later. All right. You guys can see right here this morning at 745. And this is something that I've been talking about all week. 
I don't know if any of you guys on here are also attending my Monday morning market breakdowns. I'm actually Monday and Tuesdays now. I am actually covering this. And this is something that we've talked about since Monday morning about how powerful and what the potential was in this news release. Okay, The European Union today was talking about the monetary policy, right? And then followed up right after that about 45 minutes later with an ECB press conference. And they were talking about the weakening nature. Okay, Well, if you guys look in this, you guys can see a little green box, right? And what happened? Price shot straight down. Okay, why? Because again, they were, this is the euro pound currency pair. They were talking about weakening. Obviously, this was giving the pound a bit more strength. The euro weakens. That price drops right through the floor. Okay, now this is just an example with the euro pound. You could have done this with anything. It could have been the Dow. It could have been the S&P. It could have been Apple. I mean, it could have been anything. Okay, um, this could have been oil. Now, obviously, you're not trading Apple on Nadex, just FYI. But again, you can trade this in indices and they drop the same exact way. Well, in this case, if you guys look over on the right-hand side, you know, the right on the bottom, you guys can see those were the two-hour binaries during that period of time. Now, I'm not here talking about profit and loss or anything like that. I'm just showing you what the potential was. But inside of this two-hour binary, you guys can see when price originally, when this when this printed at 8 o'clock in the morning, the price was all the way down. It was right after the drop because that drop occurred at 745 in the morning. And you can see this is a five-minute chart. So these are five-minute candles. And then at the 8:30 mark is where you can see kind of the second price spike came down. So we had the big we had the big one down, and then kind of the next pop again. But you could have taken it at either location. You can see the price is at 80. The indicative value was around 88.93. Well, look on the right hand side. Okay, when new strikes are printed, typically you will have so many strikes above and so many strikes below, and typically you're going to have an at the money. Okay. Well, in this case, this dropped so far down when these strikes printed. And at the end of the two hour time period, what did it do? It was able to retrace all the way back up to the origin of the move. And depending on what your at the money was when you got in, if it was the first or the second attempt, you know, this push down, again, you moved over six or seven strike prices back up. Okay. Now, I'm going to go into at the money a bit later. And again, we'll discuss the same one again. But just think about that. In a two hour period of time, you were able to move six to seven strike prices higher than where your entry was. Why? Because of a parabolic retracement. And that's absolutely why I love these. And again, did I know exactly when the news was coming out? Absolutely. I, I, I've known months ago, right? This information is printed well in advance. And we knew that there was going to be this monetary policy statement at 7.45 a.m. Eastern. We also knew that there was going to be an ECB press conference discussing the monetary policy statement at 8.30 in the morning. So if you were in Chicago, again, I'm an East Coaster, but if you were in Chicago, you could have woken up and said, okay, you know what? I know there's a news release at 7.30 this morning. I'm going to go in there and see what kind of, you know, what, what kind of movement can we have? What happened? Man, look at that. That is over a one and a half times move. That's a parabolic, you know, that's a parabolic move. I should be looking for a retracement. Go in there, find your two hour binary and look what happened. Seven, seven strike prices rise. Okay. Now again, not saying that there's, there's no guarantees behind this guys, but what I'm saying is this is something, this is a pattern that occurs again and again and again. All right. So let's talk about why trade the retracement. Okay, so that's that's the next slide. Okay, why not just trade the news? Is a question that I always get, Brian. If you knew there was going to be something, you drew that box. You know, you talked about it going down. And yes, a lot of the times, um, one of the things that I, you know, my personal trading strategy is a price action trader. I use a lot of supply and demand. And when news is starting in a supplier demand zone, yes, you you do have the ability to to also you know position yourself to trade the news. But in this strategy, because it's the retracement, why trade the retracement and not just try to capture that? Well, here's the reason why, okay? Most times, these parabolic moves are based off emotional responses, okay? Now, is big money, our central banks, are they emotional? No. But who is emotional in the markets? The small retail traders, okay? We are the ones that see the news release, oh my God, it's bad. And then we react after the fact. OK, that's why you see these big spikes up and down. And then what happens? This thing starts to spike. It launches away. It's good news. Oh, my God. Let's get into this one. We buy it. And then what does it do? It retraces back to where it started and we lose money. OK, it's called market psychology and the big money out there. They understand that. OK, that's why what we're doing is we are trying to position ourselves with what big money does. OK, your job as a trader is not to beat your neighbors. Okay, or your job is not to beat the banks and the bank and the institutions. It's to beat the person that's not as educated as you. And most times, what will happen, unless it's a, a huge fundamental change, if it's just kind of a you know an ADP number or something, price retraces back to where it started. Okay, and a Nadex is the perfect 
is really the perfect vehicle to be able to take advantage of that. Okay, so that's why we trade the retracement. Okay, now we're and, and another thing about this too is why not just trade the news? Well, these spikes typically stop at specific predefined areas. Okay, now again, it's not predefined for you and I. We can't just open up the book of predefined levels and uncover that. Again, that's something that the big mon the big money and only the big money knows. But again, for me and you know, as being a you know, most of the time I'm able to figure out where the stop is going to be, and that also helps me adjust it. And then that's just understanding supply and demand, and um, that's kind of a different discussion than today. All right. But again, finding these retracements, finding out where to get in—that's the important aspect of it. All right. So that's why we trade it. Now, let me just go over again the actual and the forecast again. So. There are all different kinds of news releases that are out there, okay? Um, there are many different sites that you can use. Uh, Forex Factory is probably one of the most popular. There's an app you can put on your phone or just find it on a desktop. I mean, you can literally get to it from everywhere. And pretty much any news site out there, I mean, Daily FX, um, uh, Daily FX is one, and you also have um, My FX Book is another one. Those are probably the three most popular. None of them are better than the other one. They all have the same data, the same forecast, the same previous, the same actual. So it doesn't. It's, it's entirely personal preference. But this is what you typically get. You get one that will give you the previous, and that's kind of important because they'll make some adjustments sometimes, you know, after the fact. Um, then there's the forecast, and that's what the market is is currently priced at. Okay, that's what we're looking for, and we're we're focusing on that number. And then you have the actual release, and the actual release is things that people don't know until it's released. Now. Obviously, you know, it's debatable whether, you know, somebody out there knows. And again, at the end of the day, that's not necessarily important. But the overall market, the general players, we are, we're focused on the forecast. Now, in this case, you guys can see this from August 15th, core retail sales, huge miss, right? I mean, it was supposed to be 0.4 and it was 1. The Philly Fed index was supposed to be 10, it was 16. Retail sales was 0.3 and it's 0.7. I mean, it was over twice as much. So it's not so much important to know okay, is 1% in the core retail sales index, is that good? Do I need to know that? The answer is no, you don't need to know that. What you need to know is that the forecast was 0.4 and all of a sudden it's showing up. Now, I didn't paint this green, they painted it green for the movement, but at the end of the day, I don't care. I'm just really using this to determine, okay, is there news at this time? I need to go back and check, okay? It's important to know which one of these you know matter, like does core retail sales matter than retail sales? And is, does do I have to have the Philly Fed manufacturing you know, index in there as well. So knowing which news releases are going to do this also help you kind of tone this down as well. Okay. So that's, that is kind of important. And, and again, what, what you don't want to do, and this is a little bit of a warning, what you don't want to do is use a low kind of impact news release, thinking that something is, is putting in one of these exaggerated moves, but it's actually something else that changed it. Okay. We're saying, and again, this is a entirely hypothetical scenario right now, but say that we had Say GDP, which is one of the big ones, right? You think that, and it, but it's it's GDP, but it's kind of a strange GDP. It's not just the standard one, right? And you're like, I don't, I think this is good. I mean, it has GDP in there, and you're watching it, and it's considered a yellow or an orange on something like Forex Factory, and it kind of misses a little bit, and the price spikes up in the air, and you're like, oh, this is a parabolic retracement. I need to get in because Brian said I'm supposed to, you know, find somewhere to kind of re retrace this one, and then all of a sudden it just doesn't retrace. It just keeps going and going and going and going. Well, that GDP number wasn't the actual GDP number. That was something else. It was kind of a byproduct of it, and it wasn't considered a big mover. But what you missed was that the president just tweeted. So the move happened because the president tweeted, not because of the news. And again, you got to kind of look at multiple things. So it's important to understand what news releases matter. All right. Now, when can these be traded? Okay. Great question. You know, is it only in the mornings because I work, Brian? No, the answer is no. Okay. I'm going to show you Forex times. And if you are not a Forex trader, great. It doesn't matter. Okay. The reason why I'm bringing up Forex is because Forex is what the global economy is. Okay. When we're talking about news releases, we are not just talking about US based news releases. Okay. We are talking about news releases around the entire world. Okay. We're talking about them in London, in Sydney, in Tokyo. I mean, there's the yen you can trade, the euro, the pound, the Aussie, even the New Zealand dollar. Okay. Staying with the eight major currency pairs, you can trade all, you know, seven of those on Nadex. You can literally trade and find these around the clock. Now, most of the news releases typically happen in the overlap times. Um, those are typically the most, the, the biggest movers. So if you can combine the native Forex trading hour with the, the session overlap and there's news, that's great. You know, London open for me is very, very early in the morning and they're really the only market open. Okay. You'll see a lot of European data during that time frame. And if you want to wake up, great, you can trade those. But know 
during the U.S. Open time frame in the overlap between 8 a.m. and basically noon, right? You have not only one one economy open, right? You don't just have London, but you also have New York. So a U.S.-based release there will have more volume, more liquidity, and probably more movement because there's more traders than, say, 9 p.m. at night. Now, with that being said, I am a huge fan of trading Australian data. And you know why? Because there's nobody else trading against it at the time. Okay, You'll typically get a big pop, and then it retraces back. Now, again, you may not be able to use two hours, 24 hours a day, right? And again, remember that Nadex you know, does close. It, it, it's not open 24 hours a day, right? So you do have to keep that in mind, okay? But you do have trading opportunities all day long. So if you're new to this and you have a full-time job, what you can do is say, hey, wait a second, there's Australian news tonight at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. Is that something that I could potentially trade tonight? The answer is yes, you could definitely potentially trade it. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of trading news at night for the Australian dollar, okay? Um, I do that with a lot of my students. It's, it's again, great setups, okay? Now, now next question, you may be kind of biting and saying, okay, I see the benefit of this, but you know, you know, what 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 could I trade in? Okay, um, well, very simply, this. Okay, you can trade this in forex, as I just mentioned. Again, there are seven currency pairs that you can trade it in across the board. Okay, now you can trade it with indices, and not just U.S. indices as well. Again, Nadex is is kind of generous there, and we can actually trade overseas markets as well, right? Um, if they're changing the interest rates, is you know. Are other indices going to drop and react just like ours does? Yes, absolutely. You know, could you trade the, the S&P 500, you know, trading the ES equivalent? Of course you could. Of course you could. All right. Um, and last but not least, commodities. Okay. Whoops. Now, one of the nice things, again, it's not just one of them. I mean, there's many nice things, but Nadex gives you the ability to trade all three of these things in one platform. And if you guys have already signed up with Nadex, you know this. I'm kind of preaching to the choir here. But being able to trade Forex news releases, indices, again, indices are going to be based off the actual countries, right? As well as commodities. And when I say commodities, I mean things like oil, okay? Did anybody see what oil did this week? <laughs> Guess what? We talked about oil the night before, right? Large movement. It actually just happened to be a supply zone that oil was sitting in before the actual news, right? And it, again, it's, it's understanding it. Now, biggest question a lot of people have here is like, okay, so I see it, play the retracement. And I'm looking for kind of a turning point. You know, again, all those things make sense, but you know, you mentioned out of the money. Okay. Why use an out of the money contract? Okay. So whenever you're trading any strategy out there, the first thing that you should always focus on is risk, 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 risk. Too many traders out there will do nothing but focus on how much money can I make? And that is the absolute wrong way to do this. When you focus on risk first, that's where kind of the out of the money binary here or out of the money spread or at the money spread kind of kicks in and helps, right? Now, there are pros and cons of this, okay? So let's look at an actual options chain in here just so you guys can kind of, you know, kind of see what, what I'm talking about, right? So in this case, here's the S&P 500 at the top, okay? You can see on the right-hand side, and again, you guys should be used to looking at Nadex, um, you know, options change. The indicative value right now is at 3011, right? If you go across, you can actually find the at the money binary right now, and you'll see the bid is around 47.25 and the offer is right around 50.50, right? Again, it, it could go up, it could go down. You're, you know, you know, the, they say it's a 50% chance either direction. Okay. Now, and at the money, say you were using this retracement, right? It, the price spiked all the way down, and you were using an at the money, right? If you, you know, were assuming this was going to go back up, and you and you bought, you know, you purchased the 50/50 contract. If it doesn't go up, if it just stays the same and doesn't move whatsoever, or it goes down a little bit, your risk on that is 50, 50 dollars and 50 cents. But at the same time, how much can you make? You make forty nine dollars and fifty cents. It's a one to one risk to reward ratio. Okay, you use that hear that terminology mentioned all the time. But if you're looking for some type of a, a retracement and saying, "Hey, I think that this is going to go up," now if you actually start to look at an out of the money, now your risk to reward ratio can change. Okay, if you look at the next one higher, that the uh, thirty eleven seventy five, right? Just it's the next strike above. Now it'll cost you twenty seven seventy five to get into the same piece. Okay. Now, you, your, your, your maximum risk is, again, whatever, this is Nadex, the maximum risk is whatever cost you get into the position is $27.75, or maybe even one strike price above, right? The $112.25, it's $13 to get in, maximum risk, okay? And your gain on the opposite side, your potential gain at expiration would be $87. Now, does that mean that you actually need to hold it all the way to expiration? No. 
what if you bought it for 13 and all of a sudden that became the at the money and it went up to, you know, say it went up to, let's just say it didn't even go all the way up. Let's say it went all the way up to, I don't know, let's just, yeah, we'll just say it went to 50, right? Well, if I bought it for the 13 and all of a sudden I can close it early at 50, did I just make more than one to one risk to reward ratio? Absolutely. Did I do over two to one? Yeah. Did I do over three to one? Yeah. Did I do four to one? Yeah, I'm right around that four to one risk to reward ratio, right? Yeah, see how using out of the money, not only does it lower your risk, but it also gives you a little bit more of a profit potential if you're going to close these trades down earlier. Now, what is the, the flip side of that? Again, you always have to provide fair balance here. If you purchase a farther out of the money, yes, it costs less to get in, but it also shows that it has a lower probability. So you have to make sure that your strategy is good. And this is one of the things I don't have the time to cover today. But again, when you have one of these parabolic moves and it falls into a, what I would call a buying or a selling zone, right? Now, all of a sudden, you're kind of combining the retracement strategy with, again, buying and selling based off of those two zones. Okay. Now, one of the things that I, I didn't mention on the news slide, but I want to make sure we do it now, is news does not move price. Let me, let me define that again. Move, news does not define where price is going to go. News acts as a catalyst to get price where it was going faster. Okay. Price would, without news, and again, you've, if you've seen this week, it, we haven't had a lot of market movement, right? Uh, until you know Monday and then today. But price will grind. It'll eventually hit a huge area, a large block of orders of buyers and sellers, and it'll turn and bam, it'll go in the opposite direction. News just gets it there faster because the retail traders are in there buying and selling and buying and selling, and you have Kramer going, buy, 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 and sell, 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 and people are doing that, right? And news will drive price into these buying and selling zones faster, again, if you're combining this retracement with other strategies for reversals, that's where this becomes, again, yes, it's $13 risk or $27 risk, but it's also combined with a high quality buying or selling area in conjunction with the reversal signal from the parabolic move. Okay. So that's where this gets really interesting. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to go back a couple slides here and we're going to go back to this. Okay. So this was this morning. Okay. And as I mentioned, I always love, you know, near-term examples of things like show me what happened today. Okay. As you can see in this case, look where we are right now. Okay. This was obviously this move, you know, basically shot straight up in the air, right? If you're looking at the bottom right-hand side, you can see that there is two minutes left. This was an eight to 10 AM, two hour binary. Okay. Now the at the money, as you can see, guys, when the first, when the, if you guys look at the very, very bottom of the chart, you can see the eight and the 10 at the bottom. Okay. You will see that this, the 745 is cutting it a little bit close. So I would have traded the one right after it, knowing that there was the 830 news. Price came all the way down, right? At eight o'clock, the price was down at 88.93. And as you can see, here's the options chain. We were at the very, very bottom, right? We were down at the 83. I mean, basically we were between the bottom two levels, right? So at the same time, you're obviously not going to get the top ones for two or three dollars, but Look how many strike prices above we're able to get. Now, this is your homework today. Go out there and start looking at some binary, two-hour binaries in the morning for news releases and see how many strike prices up. Could you have gotten one of these above? Maybe you could have got the 89.26 or the 89.36 or even the 89.46, right? Could you have gotten that for 12 or 13 or maybe even less? Yeah, the answer is yes. Okay, but I want you to do the homework. I want you guys to go back in there and check those things out. And at the same time, did 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 it close above the top strike? Did it go above the 89.56? No, it didn't. It is now. <laughs> now it's actually about 20 pips higher than that. But did it go above the 46? Yes. As you guys can see on the right-hand side, the 89.40 is currently where actually where price is on that chart. So did it go much higher? Yes, it actually got up to 89.47. Uh, or actually 89.48 is where it was actually at. So would that have 89.46? Could you have sold that for 50? Maybe gotten in for 12 or... 15 or 17 or $18 and then turn around and sold it back at 50? Absolutely. Okay. Now, again, understand those two blue lines at the bottom, that is a buying zone for me. Okay. When price drove into it, that was a trigger that not only was I looking for buys there, but because I was able to combine that with the parabolic retracement, it stacked the odds in my favor and I was able to actually buy something that was a little bit farther out. Okay. So I'm combining a little bit multiple strategies. I'm just trying to teach you guys the concept of being able to play the re retracements. Again, but you need to have a reversal strategy as well. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. All right, so with that being said, let's go back to where we are now. Now that you guys understand what parabolic retracements are, question is next steps. What do you do now? Okay, where do you go from here? Okay, now 
as I just said, you guys have homework after today. I want you guys to go start looking at news releases. I want you guys to start looking at not only two-hour binaries, but I want you to start looking at spreads. Okay. There is also potentials in this to use touch brackets. Okay. I want you to look at all of them and look at some of these moves and see how these moves would have played out. Okay. Now, first things first, if you do not have a Nadex demo account, go out there and sign up for one. Okay. Maybe you, you guys found this webinar through a link or something like that. And maybe you don't have it. You've heard about Nadex and you've always been interested in it. Well, first step of action is go out there, get a demo account, get in there and start looking at it, right? Get that, you know, the $25 practice account and get in there and practice in a safe environment and start looking at these things. Okay. Now, with that being said, as kind of an added bonus today, I'm going to actually do one up for you guys. Okay. I mentioned earlier that I actually have a class and it's going to be released next week. It's not out yet, but I actually have something free for you guys attending today. All right. So for those of you that are attending today, I am going to actually let you guys know it's a report. It's not finished yet. I'm just going to be I'm 100% honest. I'm putting the final touches on it right now. It will actually be releasing tomorrow, uh, Friday, September 13th. If you guys go to this website, nadex.keeptradingsimple.com. Okay. You guys can download an absolutely free, no cost, nothing. It's going to be a report that I'll end up in your email box tomorrow. And what I'm doing is for the, basically for eight currency pairs, although Nadex only has seven of them, I'm going to break down what the largest news releases are and what the expected moves typically can be off those news releases, as well as the percentage of time that it misses. Okay, it's a tool that, again, I'm including in the class, but it's something that I want to give out free to people so you guys can start looking into parabolic retracements. It's a very, very powerful strategy, and I, would, I wish more people would trade it because it's one of those things that... If you are limited on time, it's really, really great. So again, as I mentioned, absolutely free. Doesn't cost you guys anything. Put your email address in and I will email it to you tomorrow when it's fun, the, the final proofreading is done. Um, and you guys can go from there. And again, you can start looking at these and practicing in a safe environment. Okay. So with that being said, if you have any additional questions or you need some type of reversal strategy or anything, this is how you can find my information. Uh, KeepTradingSimple.com is my website. Uh, we are on Instagram and I do post a lot. Actually, if you guys have Instagram, Go add us as a friend on Instagram. I post these news trades all the time. These retracements, there, I, I, a lot of the, a lot of the posts up there are these retracements. Uh, we are on Facebook. We do nightly broadcasts as well. We have a Discord channel if you want some chat, or you can just email me. Some people just prefer the email. It's a more uh, a more private setting. You're more than welcome to email support at keeptradingsimple.com. And again, uh, it's not an instantaneous response, but you know, you guys will get them um, as I get the opportunity to kind of check in um, and get them back to you. All right. Um, so with that being said, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. And hopefully you guys were able to pull something new and add kind of another quiver to or another arrow to your quiver as far as what your trading goes with Nadex. All right. So 